So we'll be recording this session. Um, so my name is Joel Freeman. I am a university relations coordinator with USAC. So I work with um, a lot of different schools in the Midwest, including uh, Michigan, of course. Um, so I'm happy to be you know, meeting with you all at, at Michigan Tech, um, talking a little bit about tech programs and what those might look like here um, and different options that you have available to you. Um, if there are any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to just unmute yourself and, and chime in. Um, definitely want to have this be a little bit more collaborative. And I don't want to take up too much time with the presentation. I, I hope this will give you some ideas of, of different USAC programs that might be of interest to you to kind of give you some, uh, you know, some action items moving uh, if you do um, plan on, on pursuing a study abroad program. So have, hopefully after this presentation, you will. Um, so here we go. So getting started with USAC. Um, and to kind of, you know, take a wider view of, you know, studying abroad with USAC in particular, because I know you have a lot of options to study abroad at Michigan Tech or other providers. There's different exchange programs, um, a lot of different places you could study abroad with a lot of different organizations or different avenues. Um, so a few big things, we want you to stay on track with your degree for any study abroad program, whether you study in the semester or over the summer for a short term program, we want it to fit within your academic career plan. So for example, if you study abroad your sophomore year spring semester, we want that to replace a semester you would otherwise be on campus so that you don't need to extend graduation. Um, and you'll find that a lot of our programs have a lot of relevant coursework that you wouldn't need to do that anyways. It's a really great um, opportunity to build your resume and also gain a lot of cross-cultural skills, both that you can add to a resume, but also some of those intangible things, just being more independent, more comfortable in unfamiliar situations. We develop really big networks, both you know, within the US and then outside uh, in whichever country or region in which you study abroad. And it's a great opportunity to live abroad before you know you jump into um, a career post graduation. Um, the opportunity to study abroad, to have financial aid and scholarships help pay for it, to spend you know upwards of you know a full semester of academic gear abroad. Those opportunities really kind of only happen when you're an undergrad. So if you're able to only make it for a summer program short term, or if you are able to study abroad for a full academic year, it's a really unique opportunity um, that is almost exclusive to this time uh, as an undergrad student. Uh, as far as USAC itself, we have a, a lot of academically uh, rich programs. We have programs in over 50 different locations in 27 different countries. Many of them are in non-traditional locations and a little bit off the beaten path. So we try to focus on having programs where it's a little bit more of an, an immersive experience for you. One of the benefits with that, not only in an academic setting and getting to know that, that uh, area a little bit better, is that living in a smaller city, it's going to cost a lot less than if you were in a larger city. So if you're living in a small city in Italy versus Rome or Venice or Milan, um, it will be comparable to living in San, Fran San Francisco versus Houghton. Um, so kind of thinking about those things, just day-to-day -day living expenses. We provide a lot of support for you on site, but also during the pre-departure process. So we'll help you secure housing. We'll help you register for courses. Uh, we'll help you throughout the visa process if you need to get a visa for your particular program. And we have a lot of uh, extracurricular activities as well, such as internships, volunteering, field trips, um, different cultural activities as well. So we really want you to have as uh, well-rounded an experience as possible. So as you start to look for some of your programs, a couple uh, different items that I want to highlight here. And for those of you that are attending this session, um, I imagine a lot have already come up or maybe come across your mind. Um, but the first thing is definitely focusing on the courses. We want to make sure that wherever you study, you'll be able to take courses within your major or minor or general uh, Haas electives so that you can uh, progress towards graduation. 
we have two different program model types, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but one might be more suitable for you than the other. And then think about the academic timeline as well. So when is the best time within your four years at Michigan Tech? That might be the um, best time for you to study abroad as it relates to the academic courses. Uh, thinking about the cost, obviously I mentioned the, the non-traditional locations, but think about the length of stay as well. For example, while a summer program with USAC is going to cost less than a semester program, it is less cost effective if you actually look at the breakdown of cost per day or cost per credit. Um, so something to kind of think about, um, especially during the semester, there's oftentimes more financial aid and scholarships available to you. The location, the cost of the location can vary quite a bit. And then obviously think about what sort of financial aid and scholarships you might already receive could be applied to a USAC program. Uh, of course, the location is a huge factor as well. So thinking about, are you interested in an English speaking location or a non-English speaking location? If you go to a non-English speaking location, um, you'll undoubtedly learn some of that language. Which language would you like to learn? Um, we see a lot of students study abroad for heritage purposes as well. We've seen students go to Ireland. We've seen students go to Ghana and Thailand to, um, to explore their heritage, which I think is a really unique way to kind of engage with the study abroad experience. And then also think about the geography um, and the climate of that location. Uh, you know, we would want you to, if you're going to be studying abroad there, perhaps for four or five months, we want it to be a city that you would enjoy spending time in. So think about, are you more of a big city person or smaller city? Would you like to be, you know, by the ocean or the Mediterranean? Or are you okay with the inland program? You know, all sorts of things like that, that maybe aren't the biggest factor, but is definitely something to keep in mind. And then lastly, just thinking about some of your uh, other considerations that might come up, such as your personal goals, your identity, and how that might impact study abroad and then other opportunities outside the program or outside of the classroom, such as internships as well. So to give you a little bit more of a concrete idea of what a USAC program looks like and what it includes. So we have the coursework here and we'll break it down of the summer. Students will earn from three to 12 credits, depending on how long you stay. And then for a semester, just as you would at, at Michigan Tech, you would, uh, take 12 to 18 semester credits or the equivalent if you're at uh, one of our different program um, models. Uh, and for those of you that might have a language major or minor, you'll be able to take up to two years of language courses in just one year. So it's a really great opportunity to knock out a lot of the requirements you might have for, again, for a language major or minor. Quickly looking at some of those housing options, we have, have host families available in some of our locations. We do have a lot of residence halls and apartments as well, um, but it will ultimately vary on the program that you might uh, ultimately select. Lots of activities outside the classroom, as I mentioned, and then for all of our programs, while you would be taking classes with other students that are studying abroad, we are always hosted at a host institution in these locations. So you'll have full access to obviously the classrooms, um, but additionally the facilities. So like gyms, cafeterias, libraries, different clubs or organizations, different activities on campus. So you'll really have a lot of opportunity to engage with the local campus community abroad. And then again, as I mentioned, we have a lot of on-site support. So once you get to these locations, it's not like you'll just be all on your own. You'll have USAC staff and you'll have your uh, classmates who will be able to support you for the time that you are there. Uh, briefly, I wanted to mention a little bit more about the internships and what the... Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the specialty versus the partnership programs in just a moment. Um, but the specialty program internships, which most students do end up participating in, are organized by USAC. They're um, usually three US credits. Um, 
And it really kind of varies depending on the location, depending on your level of knowledge of the language of that host country as well. So for example, if you decide to do an internship in Italy, some internships will only be open for students that have an Italian language um, knowledge. You don't need to be fluent, but you would need to have some formal classroom experience with that language. Um, I can certainly provide a lot more information as well uh, after this presentation, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the internships. And we also do have some virtual internships as well, if that's of, of interest to any of you. We also have some new summer internships which we are planning to run this next upcoming summer, summer 2022, where we have a hospitality internship in Alicante, Spain, which is six credits, a health internship in Conquen, four to seven credits, and then we have a STEM research assistantship Spain. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about our Valencia Spain program. I imagine some of you might be interested in hearing a little bit more about that location. So looking at the two different USAC program models. So the first one we have is the USAC specialty program. So these are true and true USAC programs in the sense that we curate the curriculum for the um, particular programs. We hire this, the faculty that teach those uh, courses. We have on-site staff in the uh, form of a resident director and program staff. We coordinate field trips, excursions, internships, housing, I mean virtually everything about that program. The specialty um, program courses, you would be taking them with other USAC students and those USAC students, there might be others from Michigan Tech, but um, uh, you'll, you'll have classmates from all across the country that will all be on this program. One of the great benefits with the specialty program is that since we curate the curriculum for these programs, they are all US credit. So it makes the credit transfer process really easy. Um, and uh, we have specific academic areas of focus for each um, of our specialty programs. So kind of give you a clear idea of which program might be more suitable um, than others, depending on what you are studying. And then looking at the partnership programs, these are programs in which we essentially facilitate an exchange for students. So students on a partnership program will enroll directly at a host institution abroad, and you'll be taking classes with any other students. So while on the specialty program, you'll be with other USAC students and they're usually only from the US, um, not only on a partnership program in your courses, you might be the only USAC student in your courses. You might in fact, even be the only American uh, in your courses. So that can be a very exciting thing, but it can be a little bit daunting. It does require a little uh, additional level of independence as well. Most of our partnership programs do not have USAC specific staff, but they still provide that same level of support. Um, they will host orientation for you once you're on site. So they'll coordinate any internships, field trips, excursions, et cetera. And they'll also be there to support you if you're having any um, you know, difficulties adjusting to the new, uh, into your new surroundings, to the language, things like that. Here is the list of all of the countries in which we have specialty programs. So you'll see quite a bit out there um, all across the world, a lot in Europe, also in Latin and South America here, and some programs in Asia as well. You will notice that the general uh, rule of thumb is that the programs, our specialty programs are typically in non-English speaking countries. Obviously you can see there's a couple of exceptions to that rule here, but most of them are in non-English speaking locations. To give you a better idea of what that kind of looks like here, here's one of our specialty programs that we have in Valencia, Spain. And Valencia is located in the southeastern portion of Spain, right on the Mediterranean. It's actually, if you can still see my back, the background of, um, of a really unique part of Valencia uh, as my Zoom background here. So it's hosted at a polytechnic university in Spain. We offer this program for both semester and during the summer. And like many of our programs, we have a lot of activities 
um, and extracurriculars outside of the classroom. The main reason I really wanted to highlight this program in particular is because I know a lot of you are STEM students. Uh, we have a lot of STEM courses, particularly engineering courses that are offered here since we're at a polytechnic institution. So you'll see differential equations, dynamics, material science, so on and so forth. So a lot of um, some maybe those second or maybe third year courses that you might take for your engineering degree. As I mentioned, most of our specialty programs usually have a couple of different areas of focus. So our program in Valencia certainly has a focus on STEM. We also do have courses offered um, in business and then a lot in Spanish culture and Spanish language. So we'll oftentimes see students that are maybe engineering students with no Spanish background attend this program. We'll also see Spanish uh, majors attend this program and they'll both have a great experience, even if they're kind of choosing two different paths within the, the academic structure here. Now looking at our partnership programs, you can see a lot of these are in English speaking countries or in locations in which a large portion of the population is English speaking. So obviously the UK, Australia, New Zealand, but also places, places like uh, the Netherlands and Sweden as well, where students, again, you'll be able to directly enroll at these institutions abroad and take any course offered there. So it's really kind of opens up the academic opportunities for you. To give you a better idea of what a partnership program might look like, here's one that I highlighted in Stellenbosch, South Africa. Stellenbosch is about 45 minutes or an hour um, by train outside of Cape Town, so in the southwest part of the country. This program is hosted at the University of Stellenbosch and like Valencia is offered during both semester and uh, over the summer. A lot of opportunities outside the classroom and we have a lot of STEM courses available here as well. So you can see, you know, we have chemical engineering, civil engineering, uh, computer science, uh, et cetera. And then we also have a lot of programs or a lot of courses just more general that might be outside of, of STEM. Um, again, because this is a partnership program, you'll be enrolling directly at this institution. So you'll be able to take virtually any course offered here. So this is um, this program in particular and other other partnership programs. I definitely recommend to those of you that might be juniors or seniors that have very specific uh, courses that you might need to take, you might be able to find more success in finding a program that would be suitable for you on a partnership program. Now, looking at the uh, financial aspect of studying abroad, so we have a lot of resources available to you. For each of our programs, we have interactive budget sheets that will show you the total cost of the program not just the program fees, tuition, housing, but also estimates for airfare, personal expenses, uh, local transportation, um, virtually anything that you might need to budget for for your study abroad experience. Um, we will accept all financial aid and scholarships. Definitely recommend talking to Vienna and talking to the financial aid office at Michigan Tech to see um, not only if there are any additional scholarships that might be available to you, but also to make sure that your current financial aid package is something that you can use for a study abroad program. And in case you are wondering or, or might not know, the way that it works at Michigan Tech is that you would pay whatever is the greater of the two, whether it's the USAC program fee or your Michigan Tech tuition. Um, so as you look at some USAC program options, just keep that in mind. Um, and we have a lot of resources. We have a, a dedicated scholarship um, coordinator who can help you through that process um, and a lot of different resources on our website, which I'm happy to share with you. Looking at some of those resources, obviously the best place to get um, any information is on our website, which is usac.edu. We have a program search tool right at the front page where you'll be able to select what you'd like to study, when you'd like to study, and where you'd like to study to kind of give you a better idea of the program options out there for you. Um, our blog is a really great resource as well. A lot of our blog posts are from alumni, so they kind of give you a more clear idea of what's studying abroad in a particular location. 
would look like from a student perspective. And we also have a lot of info sessions and drop-in advising available. So again, here's that program search tool that, that you'll see right at the start of the, or right at the front page. So really recommend uh, seeking out those resources um, and reaching out to us as well with any questions you might have. That is the last bit of my presentation, but I do want to open it up to any questions that you might have.